everybody, this is Andy Bennett, back with our food preservation videos. We're here at Governor Charles B. Acock birthplace and for their 1840 smokehouse. And this video is gonna be on meat curing. Uh, in the 19th century, they had to wait till the fall to slaughter any animal they're gonna slaughter because of temperature. Meat curing needs to be done at 40 degrees. Anything above that increases the uh, spoilage. Anything under that retards the curing process. How they're curing this meat is they're taking it and they're going to use salt and they're also going to use saltpeter or potassium nitrate or sodium nitrate. Um, the, why the reason they're using the potassium nitrate, the salt is just dehydrating the meat. The salt, as if you've ever put salt in anything, it brings out the liquid. As we've talked about in previous videos, drying is the simplest way of preserving something. So we're using the salt to draw the water out and desiccate the meat. Potassium nitrate was added because it, it was discovered that if you added it to your mixture, your meat would stay nice and red. Before this, if you, you dried with just salt, your meat's gonna turn gray, and you know that's unattractive. So potassium nitrate or saltpeter was added, and it's gonna keep the meat nice and red. The science behind that, what it's doing is, and potassium nitrate is interacting with mitoglobin in the blood of the flesh and maintaining that red color. One of the side effects they didn't know about it at the time is that the nitrates in sodium nitrate and potassium nitrate help kill botulism. It penetrates deeper into the meat and preserving more of the meat in the layers there. So the process you have to do is we've got here a pork tenderloin that I rubbed it down uh, in uh, sodium nitrate or Chilean saltpeter and salt and we've covered it in salt. On the farm in the smokehouse, if we take a walk over here, um, they have a large log that turned into a giant salt trough because they're gonna be doing mini hams, large pieces of meat, we need this large salt trough. And that's gonna stay in there. It takes uh, six days for every inch of flesh that we're trying to cure. You throw bone and fat in there. So the length of time to cure out a large ham is really gonna take us about several months of curing process, right? So we've got our meat completely cured out. We've went through that process as it's dry as possible. We've sucked all that moisture out, out of it, keeping that bacteria from breaking down the meat. But we've got, as in other videos we've talked about, we've got some beneficial bacteria helping us out. The lacto family of bacteria. Some of those can be our enemies in this process, but some of them are, doing, are creating the flavor in meat, the meaty flavor. Uh, that we enjoy in uh, products, meat cure, uh, salt cure products, mainly comes from bacterial interactions going on in it. Um, the smoking process does add a little bit of flavor, uh, but it's mainly that bacteria helping us out. The bad bacteria that can get in there, the lactobacteria, can go through a fermentation process and ferment our meat. That's what we need uh, if you think about certain sausages like pastrami, a pepperoni, some of those go through a fermentation process and give us that nice hard consistency of those sausages, but we don't really want that in a ham or a bacon, right? So those bad bacteria or those bacteria we don't want, they don't give us any additional thing, what are they gonna do? What are they gonna cause? If you're familiar with a country cured ham, if you've ever been to a, a farm, uh, the ham's hanging up, you sometimes will see a white mold on them, a greenish color, right? What that greenish color is, is actually the, is the nitrates interacting with the oxygen in the air to create uh, hydrogen peroxide. Yeah, like hydrogen peroxide you might put on a wound. That's interacting with the, the nitrates in the meat and that's where we get that green color. You're talking about green hams, like green eggs and ham, or if you ever had a packet of bologna you left in the refrigerator too long and all of a sudden you get these green spots on it, that's actually, that. Uh, that potassium, uh, that nitrates interacting with hydrogen peroxide, that's not mold. So we have green uh, hams. The mold, the whitish mold, it's okay. We don't want to get it in the meat, so we, that's why the hams need to be brushed with salt water every once in a while. And especially if we go to cut into them, we need to apply some kind of salt to them to kind of seal that wound back up to dehydrate that outer layer of meat. Those are two of the main things that we have going on meat. And there's also ham slime. And ham slime is another bacteria that gets on the, on the outside of meat, but it's okay, we just brush it off. 
Uh, some of the other things that can affect our meat curing process are parasite, uh, parasitic insects uh, that are going to get into the ham. We've got ham beetle uh, skippers uh, that can burrow into meat. And what they're basically doing, they're burrowing in to lay their larvae to consume some of this meat, but those holes they're drilling in the ham is going to help introduce bad bacteria that's going to make the meat spoil. So the farmer, the smokehouse, is where all that hard labor raising the animal and this whole process of months going through a process to cure these meats can be ruined uh, by rodents and by insects. Uh, the smokehouse need to be kept an eye on really closely. Um, very few places still cure meat out this way. Um, we are lucky in eastern North Carolina. We have uh, nearby here to Charles B. Aycock birthplace. We have a, a facility that still does it. So that's where I've, I got this ham at. I uh, hope you're enjoying these videos on food preservation. You're learning something from them. And always check out our videos on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook.